One hundred years after Susan B. Anthony penned these words to a fellow suffragist, the nation's most popular news magazine published an article about a group of promising painters working in New York. Titled Women Artists in Ascendance, the life feature began with the dubious declaration that, in the art-filled centuries of the past, women rarely took up serious careers as painters or sculptors, before going on to praise five women, all under the age of 35, whose work characterized the lively American art scene and who had won acclaim not as notable women artists, but as notable artists who happened to be women. Parallel to the broader battle early 20th century American women waged to overturn the socio-political constraints historically prescribed by men in law, female artists of the era struggled to earn access to, and acclaim in, the country's cultural arena. While the practice of using gender-obscuring pseudonyms for exhibition submissions may have dwindled by mid-century, the fight to garner serious critical and commercial affirmation remained uphill. Speaking for her generation of artist advocates in 1934, Alabama-born painter Ann Goldthwaite insisted that women artists wanted to be judged strictly on the quality of their accomplishments through a lens that prioritized genius, not gender. In her words, we want to speak to eyes and ears wide open and without prejudice to an audience that asks simply, is it good? Not, was it done by a woman? As far into the millennium as 1976, legendary painter Georgia O'Keeffe declined to participate in an important all-female exhibition, vowing that she wanted to be known not as a great woman artist, but as a great artist, period. Working in a region that trailed the national arc toward gender equality, women artists with connections to or careers in the South routinely encountered resistance in their quest to gain parity, especially when their mode of expression was modern in style or subject. Furthermore, contemporary female artists of color faced what Lois Maylou Jones termed the double handicap of racism and sexism. Like their sisters to the North, these Southern women often worked alongside, but in the shadow of, their more celebrated male counterparts, despite the commonalities, dynamic brushwork, bold color, and abstract imagery, of their canvases. Nevertheless, they persisted, presaging the truth that Betty Friedan would proclaim in her groundbreaking 1963 treatise, The Feminine Mystique. The only way for a woman, as for a man, to know herself as a person is by a creative work of her own. <laughs>